Ammon here with King of Pressure Washing. Tonight, I want to hit on some things of, actually, I'm going to hit on a lot of things, but I want to talk about growing in 2023, whether you're starting and growing or going from 50,000 to 100,000 or going part-time to full-time. I want to talk about all of this stuff in tonight's live and what are some things that we can start doing to help us be successful in 2023 and yes i know there's all kinds of things out there that we can tell ourselves that we can't do it or the economy or whatnot but that's not the point of this this is to help you start and grow and be where you want to be at so you can have financial freedom and you can have time freedom at the end of the day so these are some things i'm going to hit on i'm going to hit on them hard i want to talk a lot about you know the things that we can do to set us up and get us ready to go in 2023 you know <clears throat> 2023 is only about 30 days away from us right now. So before we know it, December is going to be here. This, end, this is going to be the end of the year. And these are some things that we can look forward to to help us keep growing and being where we want to go and what do we want to do when we get there. And so these are the things that we will be able to do and make that happen. But before we get there, I see we got Billy in the house. What's up? How are you doing tonight on this beautiful cold nasty night i don't like the cold if you never didn't understand that of me um we got mr four seasons in the house um hello how are you doing we got randy in the house how's randy doing tonight and so these are some things we got um uh, performance power washing um in the house hello hello how are you doing so these are some things that we need to start looking for for 2023. So the number one thing that we need to start doing right now is looking at what do we want to do in 2023? What is our goal in 2023? And so some things that I want you to do, and I'm going to have a little worksheet here that I'm going to talk on to and show you some things, how we can start thinking and start growing. And I'm going to use that to help grow us and make us to where we need to go at before we get there. We got Steven in the house. How's Steven doing? We got Lynn, Mr. Lynn. We got Andrew, happy as a clown. Um, how do I talk to someone with your company? I would like to sign up for your monthly membership. I have some questions before I sign up. Um, you can go to Facebook and you can message me. That's the best way you can get to me. Or you can email me at pressurewashhelp at gmail.com. Um, those are the two things. We got Pink Pink Robin in the house from Tampa, Florida. We, I wanted you to come. Jason called me today. And so, you know, <laughs> Jason called me today, or we were talking back and forth. And um, how did that get turned on? Um, we were talking back and forth. And um, he's like, man, I might get another $30,000 month. And so it is pretty awesome to see people hit $30,000 a month um, by himself. And it really is awesome to see this and awesome to watch people grow. But, all right, let's get back to where do we want to be at in 2023? Do we want to be at, do we want to get to 50000 Do we want to get to 100000 Is our goal $300,000? Is our goal a million dollars? Well, one thing I want you to do is start writing these things down. Start writing these things down. And so some things that we're going to do to look forward, we kind of need to see where we are, where we was before. So I want to see what, if you guys have been doing your homework and you know your numbers, I want to see kind of what has been your average ticket. How much has your average ticket been in the last 12 months? How many, what, what has been your average ticket? Can anybody give me some average tickets out there? Um, I'm going to wait here a second and see. I want to know what your average ticket has been in the last 12 months, right? Just take your, all the jobs that you did, put them in a big lump sum. Um, if you want to do pressure washing at Christmas sites, it's probably going to be better because our Christmas site 
projects are going to be way higher. But what has been your average ticket for pressure washing in 2023? Or in 2022? That's my first question. And this is important. So we got Richard at 550. Um, we got um, 8620. Uh, just finished very first episode. Have you on um, finally watched the live? We got $385. We got $996. All right. So that's good numbers to know because we can't, we can predict the future if we know what our numbers are, right? If we know what our numbers are right now, then we can say, all right, how do I get to the next level, right? How do I go from part-time to full-time? What, how much money do I need? How much stuff do I need to be able to get there? And so a lot of this has to do with marketing and understanding marketing and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm just going to show a little bit here before I get too far down in the weeds of how you can take these numbers and help you. So we got all kinds of numbers all over the board here for an average customer. And so that's awesome. So my next question to you is, is how many jobs on average did you do last year? That's my next question. How many jobs on average do you do last year or this past year um, in a month? So how many jobs in a month are you averaging? Are you averaging 20 jobs at 500 bucks? Are you averaging, you know, 10,000 or um, 100 jobs? How many are you averaging per month? I, I want to see kind of what that number looks like. How many jobs are you averaging per month? Because again, we're going to take these numbers and I'm going to put them in this spreadsheet and I'm going to show you how this is going to work for you. And so this is something that you all can start thinking of. How many leads do I need to get to my, my next number, right? How many leads do I need to get there? And so why I wait, while I wait on you to do that, I'm going to share my screen here. Let me pull up the right screen. Um, I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to use this little calculator here. So the, um, so this is going to be my calculator. I'm still waiting on that number. I'm not seeing that number yet, but that's all right. So the next number I want to see is is 10 to, 10 to 12 jobs per month. That's a good, I like that. That's 10 to 12 jobs a month. He's doing it part-time at an average ticket of $385, right? So that's that's you know, three, that's almost $4,000 a month right there, part-time. That's pretty awesome, right? So my next goal is, is what is your target goal for 2023? How much do you want to do in 2023? So I'm going to do something here that is, um, well, I'm going to see what, I'm going to see what, how much you all want to do. And then I'll change my numbers here. Um, once I see how much you all want to do. So what is your goal for 2023? How much money do you want to do in 2023? Um, um, Billy is part time, um, five uh, part time. Nice. Um, so, what is your goal for 2023? How much money do you want to bring in in 2023? And the reason why I'm hitting this is is because this is important that we see this stuff. So then that way you will understand um, what we need to do to be able to get there. Right? We can't get there if we don't have enough. Um, resources to be able to get there and so um, this is going to show you and I'm going to it's going to be kind of eye-opening um, but it's going to help you understand it so let's do um, so Tyrone put $150,000 um, so we will put $150,000 in here so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to remove the zero and I'm going to put a five in there now I know that um, I know that in my area, you can only work nine to 10 months out of the year. Um, I don't know where you're at, but in this area, you can only get 10 months out of the year. So I'm actually dividing this number here into um, um, 10 months. So that way, because I know there's people in the South that can do 12 months, which makes it a lot easier, but there's also people in the North that can't do 10 months or can only do nine months, 10 months. And so maybe only eight months. And so we are going to leave this here so that way we can see that. So what you have here is, is we need a monthly revenue of $15,000 a month, right? We need to get in $15,000 a month for our 10 months will bring us to $150,000. So what is your average ticket? Now, this is where it's kind of eye-opening, right? This is where it's kind of like, oh, wow, that's amazing. So, so I'm going to go on the lower side because sometimes people struggle and we're at $400. 
So that means to be able to hit our goal, we need to have 38 jobs. We need to get 38 jobs at $400 to be able to do um, $15,000 a month to be able to do $150,000 a year. So 38 jobs is quite a bit per month, right? If there's 20 working days, you know, that's four jobs a day. So that's quite a bit. And I'm going to show you why it's important that we get our average tickets up here shortly. So if we say our close rate is 50%, sometimes we're going to be lower, sometimes we're going to be higher. Um, and our average cost uh, um, per lead to generate a lead is 30 bucks. Now, how much does it cost to generate a lead? It depends. Um, I know on Google ads, you can be anywhere from 10 to $15 per click. And it usually takes three clicks to get one lead. So one lead costs us 30 bucks. I'm gonna just go $10, $30. So that means for us to hit this number in 10 months, we're gonna to have to spend $2,500 in marketing. So we're gonna to have to spend a little bit more than the 10% to be able to hit these numbers. Now wait, there's more, right? Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm all about marketing. I'm all about getting our higher tickets. How do we get our average ticket up, right? Now watch this. Watch us just take this number here and take our average ticket from, um, uh, uh oh, back up there. Um, watch us take this average ticket right here from $400 and we're gonna make that to $500. Look what it did to us. It dropped us in how much our cost is gonna get there and it makes us only need 30 jobs instead of 38 jobs, right? So now we only need, you know, if we work, if we work um, um, 20 days a month, you know, we don't need near as many jobs, right? Now watch this again. We're gonna make this go up again because I do believe anybody can get it up to $600 a month or $600 per job, right? So if we get this up to $600 per job, we only need 25 jobs for the month and we will spend up $1,500 to be able to get to that. You see, by us raising our average price and our average ticket, our money at the bottom comes down. And that's the important part to understand this when we're thinking about marketing. When we're thinking about marketing, the more we can get our average ticket up, the less jobs we gotta do. And that's the important part. Now, will it might cost us a little bit more to be able to get that, but this here is not too far off right here, right? Because if we it costs us $30 to get a lead and we close 50% of the leads, guess what? We're at 60 bucks to get a job, right? And so $60 for a $600 job is 10% of the 10%, right? That's kind of where we want to be at. So this is the important part to think when we're thinking about this and when we're trying to grow our business. And this is why it's so important. And what got me onto this kick right here is I got a phone call. I got a text message tonight from my good buddy, Al. And my good buddy, Al, my good buddy, Al, um, is like, you know what? Is it bad that I get all giddy inside when I see these rigs going up for sale, they've been in they've been in business for a year or two, and all these rigs are going up for sale, and I just start laughing. He's like, I just start laughing. He's like, I see all these rigs going up fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for sale because they can't make they because they doing a business change, right? They they got a change of heart or they got a, a different job coming, and so what that tells me is is you failed, you failed and because you're quitting and only quitters fail, right? And so these are some things that, and I understand there's times that we gotta quit or we gotta do it, but you know, this is one of the reasons why most people fail is, is because they don't understand marketing. They will invest. So, you know, I'm wanting you to invest, um, if it's $150,000, right? $150,000. That means you're gonna bet, you're gonna invest in your business. You're gonna invest ten thousand dollars, ten thousand, almost fifteen thousand dollars, right? Fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money. Fifteen thousand dollars is is a lot of money. And you're right, it is a lot of money. You can go buy a brand new rig for fifteen thousand dollars. But I guarantee you, whether you spend the money on fifteen thousand dollar rig or a fifteen thousand dollars in marketing. I will bet you $100 right now that the hundred that you spend in the $15,000 in marketing will get you to $150,000.
I bet you $100 that buying a, a $15,000 rig and spending no money in marketing will not get you to $150,000. I've seen very few people get there from word of mouth or whatever, you know, grill of marketing you're doing. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I've seen a lot more people go out of business because they spend $15,000 on equipment, but will spend $1,000 on marketing because they don't like to spend money on marketing. And that's the dumbest thing you can do. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up here is, is because like I said, Al messaged me tonight. I wish I'd have saved this message because it was kind of funny and it was kind of comical. And you know what? I like funny and comical, but you know what? I also don't like seeing people fail, but you know, sometimes people don't always listen. And so when you don't listen, guess what? You don't always have the best chance of making it at the end of the day, right? And so this is important that we make sure that we are doing the things we need to do to get our business to where we want to be at. You know, some things that we got to think about growing in 2023 is, is what is your goals? I want to see what some of your goals are down here. Write some of your goals. That's what I want to see. Um, guess, I'll give it a try. <laughs> um, I want to see what some of your goals are. Um, I really want to see what some of your goals are. Um, our first year in Christmas light, average job was $1,380. That's amazing. Um, I can't quit even if I don't market as much. Um, what platform do you use for Facebook video ads, Facebook videos? Um, I bet you, I bet you a hundred dollars. I can make 150,000 without spending 15 K. Yeah. And you've been in business for a lot longer than everybody else. I'm talking about people that are either just starting out or if you went to move to a brand new city and you had nothing and starting from scratch, you knew nobody, you had no contacts. I'm not talking about we've been in business and we already got our name out there. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about people that have started within the last two years. That's what I'm talking about because that's where you see these rigs going for sale is people starting up in the last two years. They spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a freaking rig and now they're selling it for $10,000. $10, that's what I'm talking about is that right there. Um, fortunate that I was able to pay my pressure wash and rig off in 20, in three months in summer. I have a lot of money for marketing now, you know, and marketing is the most important thing we can do. That is why I preach marketing, 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 because here's the thing. Sometimes we can do things, but we can't always do marketing and marketing's hard. Marketing, spending money on marketing is hard. Um, us doing what you are teaching us to do is the only way we got the job that we have. Yard signs, Facebook ads, they work. Both work amazing for Christmas lights and pressure washing. Um, both of them work great. Um, so let me, I, I want to see what some of your goals are for 2023. And so rather it's a goal for setting for, um, and write these goals down. I want you to write down these goals. These are goals that I want you to start writing your own goals down. And I want you to write goals. I don't just want monetary goals, right? I want, I want monetary goals. I want how many business goals, right? How many reviews are you going to do? Are you going to add another truck? Are you going to go full time? Are you going to stay part time? Are you, what, what are your goals for that? And then the next thing I want you to start writing down is what is your goals for you? right? What are you, what is the goals for you? Are you going to take classes and take different classes and learn different skills and, and do different things and maybe have something about um, your personal life, right? What are, what's, what's some of your personal life goals? Um, you know, maybe it's to run across the world. I don't know. Some people are dumb enough to think that, but that's not me, obviously. Um, <laughs> I'm fat, so I don't like running. Um, so these are some things that we got to think about when we start going here. So we got going full time. Um, to finally get my business up and running, just bought How to Wash Course. Um, nice. You should have probably bought kingofpressurewash.com and you would be a lot better off. Um, getting my son started and running, learning solid work habits. That's a, that's a tough one. You know, me and my wife was talking about that um, today about what they teach these kids in school. Now I spent right at two grand for pressure washing setup, waiting on my yard signs. Now ordered 50 just to get me started because I'm on a tight budget. We'll, um, order more after my next house. Good. Um, get him, um, where he can buy a rig on his own. 
Um, getting out, getting rid of some debt. That's a great, that's a great goal. Um, man, debt is definitely something that will hold you back at the end of the day, right? Um, getting out of debt is definitely something to um, help you get going. Um, 300 reviews. That's a good goal, right? 300 reviews. 300 reviews will definitely help your business grow. So, if you all have any other pressure washing questions, you can ask away um, for sure. Um, don't be hesitant to ask, and I will answer any of your questions. So, you know, the, the thing that kind of got me, like I said, I'm going to eat and drink healthier. Um, master the only over the next decade and find the niche in counting life um, purpose, um, counting my life purpose. You know, um, so these are some things that we can do that will help us grow, right? You know, as I think about this, and actually I was, I watched a video today and I watched a webinar today and it talked a lot about this, about setting our marketing up for next year, right? What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? You know, and this is something that is important, right? Getting our Google My Business set, right? How do we get our Google My Business set? Do we have citation set running for it? You know, our Google My Business is probably one of the most important things that is now one of the hardest things to get. It's not easy to get a Google My Business anymore. You know, before you didn't need a website, you didn't need any of this stuff, and you had to do all this, you didn't have to do all this work. But now to be able to get your Google My Business set, you need a website, you need a Twitter, you need a YouTube, you need a, you need a LinkedIn, you need all these citations going to everything, and then you may get your Google My Business. And it may get suspended at the end of the day. Who knows, it probably will. Um, and you will fight for it for three months to try to get it unsuspended. And so this is why we want to be able to add all of these things before we go trying to get our Google My Business. Because if we add all these other things and it has our nap on everything and we have our citations and we have the things that we need, guess what? Google's going to be like, hey, this is a business. I'm going to go ahead and set a business there. And that's what is really important when we're doing this. So building our foundation around our Google My Business will help us hit $100,000 without doing nothing else, right? We can get our Google My Business. We can get in Map Pack, which is the three, and, we're, and you're going to get a lot of jobs out of there. You know, you don't even have to spend money on ads if we can get up into three pack for pressure washing, power washing, um, different words along those lines, right? And if we have a good um, map location, right, we want to kind of map out where we want to work at, um, you know, like for me, downtown Cincinnati, I'm not making no money in downtown Cincinnati. I'm going to make all my money up where all the rich people are. And that's where I want to be at. That's the people I want to shoot for. I want to shoot for the people that are willing to pay me a $900 average ticket. Because if I can get a $900 average ticket and I can do two of those a day, I'm at $1,800 a day. $1,800 a day times 20, I'm doing Paul right at the end of the day, right? I can hit big numbers at that point. I'm going to hit bigger numbers than what I got there. And that's what I'm, go that's what I'm shooting for you to do. That's what I want you to do. It's very possible to do with one pressure washing rig. It's not that hard. It's just a matter of making sure we're getting the foundation set. So then that way, when we do start putting our ads and everything, these are the things that are going to help us to grow, right? These are the things that's going to make us grow. And these are the things that are going to make us get to the next level um, and so these are the things that you have to do to get there so the very first thing is is and this is some good and this is why i'm hitting on again in the winter time i'm going to hit more on this in the winter time because this is the time to do it right we can get our google my business set up we can get our pictures on our google my business we can Try to get some reviews on Google My Business, especially if you haven't been doing it. What Do you have automation set up to get this stuff done? If you don't have automation set up to get this stuff done, you're probably not going to get reviews. You're probably not going to be putting things in there to help us grow that Google My Business so people can find this on Google My Business. Google My Business is a huge part of getting your phone to ring um without having to spend a lot of money google my business is called local seo local search engine optimization and it's very important you know can does regular seo work yes it does it's still not dead there's still money out there to be done 
But you got to remember that most people are searching on their phone, and when they're searching on their phone, it takes five, four to five, six scrolls to get down into the organic. It only takes about two or three to get into the map pack, and the map pack is where a lot of people shop. And so the map pack is very important to make sure that we're getting into the map pack. So that's something that we can do right now in the wintertime and start working on it so we can start get building and growing. Have you set up AdWords with AdWords? Uh, I don't know. Have you ordered AdWords? I'll have to check if you did. If not, they're not free. Um, I do have one. Mixing in containers and go over it, please. Um, oh, I do have a question. Um, I do have one. Mixing in containers, can you go over it, please? So this is very important. This is something that is... Um, this is this will get you killed. Um, it literally can get you killed. I'm not even joking when I say it. It can kill you if you mix things that aren't supposed to play each well with each other. So what I always tell people, if it doesn't play well with each other, don't mix it. And if you don't know if it don't play with it, play well with each other, don't mix it because it could blow up. Um, and I'm not even joking when I'm talking about blowing stuff up with um, uh, mixing the wrong products. And so I'm gonna see if I can pull up a, um, a picture here because it's important. I want you to understand how important this is in being safe when we're dealing with this stuff. This is not something that is just lightly, um, you know, all oh, Jason's just trying to scare me. This is, this will kill you. Um, and so it's important that we make sure that we are mixing the right chemicals and we're mixing them properly and we're keeping us safe. Um, and so this is why it is important that we be careful with this because it can hurt you or kill you. And so this is actually in my course here. Um, this is my online course here that I'm gonna pull up here if I can. Um, slideshow slideshow all right so i'm gonna pull up a picture oh, that's too big exit screen um all right so this is this is what can happen to you so this is important that you understand what can happen to you so if you don't know if it mixed wells don't do it um let's see if i can scroll in here so you can see so first off i'm gonna scroll out here and i'm gonna move my big fat head um and I want you to see this chemical here. Um, you can see right here, whoop, right here, you can see what this um, this um, pump up sprayer looks like. Um, it is very serious, right? It has blown to shreds. And so he said, had a quite rough Monday. Um, I was doing a house wash and a rust removal on a large apartment complex. I had aluminum brightener and a pump up sprayer and was carrying it around the building. Long story short, the pump sprayer exploded. It felt like a stepped on a grenade went off in my hand. Broken thumb, 12 stitches in my thumb, shattered my big toe, broken third toe, and split open my foot. It did all of this damage through my huck boots without cutting them open. Solely impact from explosion. I would post a picture, but it's pretty gruesome. I've only had aluminum brightener in this container before, so I have no clue how it happened. Any ideas? This is serious stuff. This isn't, oh, Jason's just making this up. This happened, right? This happened, let's see if I can see, what, I don't know when that happened. It happened last year, right? It is serial, serial uh, serious stuff. Um, and this is something that can happen to you. So we have to be careful with mixing chemicals. You know, when I when I teach my class about pressure washing, this is about 30 to 40 minutes of my class is all safety on chemical safety, on ladder safety, on high pressure safety, on all of these stuff because it is super dangerous, right? This is stuff that can blow up. Um, if we have, um, when I first started, um, there was a guy that um, he, were, he was out of Tennessee, Clark, I believe his name was, um, he's still in the, out there. He still works in the pressure washing world. Um, but he was, um, he had an employee 
that took and it had um, sodium. Um, he put, uh, it had acid in it and he drained all the acid out of it. Or no, I think it had bleach in it. So he drained all the bleach out of it, got it all out, maybe sprayed it out a little bit and put some, put the acid in it, put the lid on it and kaboom. One drop of SH and acid with the, the, the lid tight it will blow up on you. It will, it will, it will just boom, blow up. It's not even funny. It will blow up. Um, so we have to be careful with this. So, you know, when you're saying, uh, mixing containers, you know, we have to be careful with bleach. You know, I was talking about Al earlier and Al put some, um, he decided to put some smelly stuff in his bleach tank. Well, that smelly stuff had, um, oil in it that had, that had made that whole tank like smoke coming out. He couldn't touch the, the container. It was so freaking hot. Um, and so it was like lemon oil and the acid in that lemon oil was enough to make that stuff, um, like ready to explode. Um, so if it was probably sealed tight, it would have literally exploded. So we have to be careful when we're dealing with our chemicals. It is important that we are very, very careful. The last thing I want you to do is get hurt. That's not what I want. You know, I've got a lot of pictures and a lot of stuff on here talking about this stuff because it is very special. It's, it's very dangerous at the end of the day. It's something that, you know, rather it's a chemical blowing up there or maybe a high pressure hose um, getting in to injecting high pressure water into your uh, blood and it can literally go to your heart and kill you. Um, it's not something that we can just take lightly and, you know, it can take, it can hurt you. Um, I've seen a person pull the, have a pressure wash gun, pull it and it went straight up his face. Luckily it missed him, but it went straight up his face. If it would have been about uh, another quarter inch back, it would have took right up his face and he would have had b bad issues at that point. Um, so we got to be careful when we're dealing with chemicals. Chemicals are something that we do use to clean with, but they are very dangerous. And I don't want any of you to get hurt. So I know I've hammered on this nail a lot here talking about this, but I don't want you to get hurt, and this is one way to keep you from getting hurt. Um, how do I get oxidation off a metal roof, off painted white brick? Um, how do I get oxidation from a metal roof off painted white brick? Um, you're going to have to use an acid to get it off, but the problem of it is, was, is that painted white, you, an acid will probably work for you. I swear I drank like a gallon and a half a day and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> What's up? Uh, dear Lord, $3,500 roof job. One day, Florida, raise your prices. Um, looking for one more $30,000 a month. You know, and this is a guy that is literally part-time. He does this on the Monday through Friday, but he has a full-time. Um, he's a buggy rider. Um, he rides the buggy. Um, he's an, he's the ambulance dude. Um, <laughs> he, he rides the ambulance, and he works at the firehouse, and he does um, 70 or uh, 56 hours a week there, and then does this part-time. You don't work the weekend. Um, and so he's done two thirty thousand dollar month. He did a thirty thousand dollars month in May, um, and so it can be possible. So get to business, you know. And let's talk how he gets there. You know, a lot. I know Jason. He uh, he always texts me and says, you know, people always ask me, how do I get there? How did I do it? What do I need to do to get myself there? You know, this is some things that you got to follow the process, right? Following the process, Jason, when he started out, he didn't start out with no big rig. He didn't start out with no eight gallon a minute, $30,000 rig. He started out with a, a pieces of paper, pieces of tape on the uh, floor. And he started out with crappy crap, a little four gallon, a minute, might not even been a four gallon a minute machine and not much at all. And he d followed the process. He didn't put all his money in equipment. In fact, he didn't buy equipment for a long time. He kept on his small equipment until he was able to grow and keep it going to where he needed to be. And so, you know, and did Jason doubt himself in his prices? Absolutely, he doubted himself in his prices. When he first called me, he's like, you can't make money down here. There's only $99 guys. And you know what I told him? 
Don't worry about everybody else. Everybody else, you can worry about everybody else all you want, and then that means you're not worrying about your own business. And when we worry about them, there's nothing we can do about it. It's kind of like the book in Million Dollar Offers where he talks about, um, you know, a lot of people will go out and price shop and say, oh, all these people were at this price. And, and so what you will do is, oh, you know what? I'm going to be better than them. I'm going to do better than them, and I'm even going to charge less than them. But what they don't realize is, is that guy's ready to go out of business because he's not being profitable, right? And so what I told Jason is, is follow the process, raise your prices. Yes, you're going to get a hell of a lot of no's. And he's only at a 30 some percent close rate. So he's getting a lot to no's, but he's going to do $30,000 a month. How do you do $30,000 a month? Following the process, right? He's doing his Facebook lives. He's doing his um, five arounds. He's flipping rocks. He's going and knocking on doors. He's getting on LinkedIn and, and following people and doing all the things you need to do on LinkedIn. He's doing the things that makes the phone ring, right? He's putting out yard signs at 4.30 in the morning on a Saturday morning um, and puts out 25, 50 yard signs every Saturday morning, right? These are the things that you have to follow the process because if we don't follow the process and we're just like, I just want the phone to ring and I'm going to buy a $30,000 rig, your phone's not going to ring. I'm sorry to tell you that. You're not going to make no money and you're going to go out of business. And I don't care what anybody else tells you, you're going out of business, right? You know, to get $30,000 a month doing this part-time is, it can be done. Jason's doing it. Now, his wife helps him. Um, she does some of the posting on LinkedIn and different making graphics and different things and helps him, right? She does some of the work. But Jason does every job, and he answers the phone. And that's how he's gotten to this point to do a $30,000 a month. He did a $30,000 last month. He did a $30,000 a month before that. And he's done $20,000 a month before all of those. You know, he's going to hit $250,000. So to hit $250,000, think about that. That's a quarter million dollars by one person, two people, him and his wife. Um, don't have no employees, just them two. And don't work full time. She's a full time teacher. He's a full time firefighter. And this is what they do. It can be done. I promise you. It can be done. You, How do you do it? Hashtag raise your prices, right? Find the right customers. He sent me, he videoed, um, he videoed, he sent me a video today and he's on this house and it, it's the helicopter pads over there and all this other craps around here because that's how you get it there. That's, those are the customers. The cheap customers aren't going to get you jobs. You know, Jason was on such cheap, crappy equipment. He would literally park his truck out of all sight so that it would never be any pictures or it wouldn't even be seen from the customer. He would park down the street and walk up the street to get into to, to the customer's house so that way the customer couldn't see his equipment. That's what he literally did. And that's not even no joke, you know. But guess what? He's doing $30,000 a month. He followed the process. He didn't go, oh, I'm going to go buy this fifteen thirty thousand dollar rig and it's just gonna make me all this money and i'm not gonna spend no money in marketing you know he spends lots of money in marketing still to get to where he's at he's spending a thousand two thousand dollars a month in google ads right he's but would you will be willing to spend two thousand dollars in google ads and you do two hundred fifty thousand dollars this year i would be i would be for sure i, I mean i'd spend that all day long spend two thousand dollars a month to make $250,000, you're stupid if you wouldn't, right? Because he found a lever that works, one, one of many, it's not the only. You know, he's, he's followed the process on LinkedIn, and now these leads are starting to come in on LinkedIn, right? He's followed the process on yard signs, and yard signs is what really got him to where he, where he was able to do to spend money on Google ads and do things, but he still does his Facebook lives. He still does his, um, he's still doing um, um, yard signs. He still does the five arounds, maybe a 10 around, right? He still does those little things, all those little pesky things that were like, that don't work. But what you don't understand is, is one of those, you know, 
door hangers isn't something that you're going to get a large return on it, but you got to get some return on it. If you can get one or two phone calls a week for it, is it not worth putting them out of there? What do you think about gift certificates for pressure washing? People can buy them as presents for family and friends. It's You can try it. I never had luck with it. I don't know anybody that's had real good success with it. I did a roof job the other day with no gutters. I had to go back and hit a small spot that didn't clean. I noticed a line of dead leaves on the bushes along the roof where it dripped. We got to water the crap out of it, man. Water, water, water. If you don't have no gutters, I would rinse that roof off. Um, I would rinse the roof. I would rinse the whole roof. Um, if it don't have, if it, if it, you got it, and it's going to take you longer, but that's just part of it. You know, I don't have that issue up here in Kentucky. Every house we have here has gutters on. I couldn't tell you out of all the house washing and gutter cleaning and roof cleaning. I couldn't tell you one house that don't have gutters here. So I don't have that problem up here, but if you have no gutters, wherever you're at, you have to rinse that roof. Because what happens is, is that what happened is, even if you rinse it in the morning, even if you soak everything real good and you didn't rinse the roof, and that next morning some dew gets on that roof, it's enough to bring that salt off, and now we've killed stuff. So it's very important that we make sure that we, we water, 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 water. Uh, $3,500 one day on the hunt for one more $30,000 month. I watered the heck out of the bushes before and after. How do I prevent this in the future? Water, water, water. Rinse the roof off and water some more. Um, put in a bid to, for a cleaning commercial property today, waiting patiently for a response. Make sure you follow up. You know, follow up in a couple of days. Don't just leave it there and don't follow up. Follow up is huge. I'm going to be pushing hard on this this year for follow up. Um, I did that as well. Um, we had a light rain a few days later. Would that cause it? If you didn't rinse it, yes, because a light rain is enough to bring that salt off, and yes, it will. What did he mix in the aluminum brightener? It was literally just aluminum brightener. What happened is, is he, it was sitting out in the hot sun, and over time, the little relief valve didn't um, let off. And over time, he it, he didn't keep pulling the handle on it to release it. And as that as that chemical got hotter, it eventually just blew up in his hand. Yeah, possibly with no gutters around, every house has gutters, which is great. I have both. Maybe I need to stay away from gutterless jobs. Yep. I know people that get out of roof cleaning that have a big job, you know, have big companies get out of roof cleaning because that's where all the failures are. I'm going full-time April 2023. Any advice for next season? Yeah. Start marketing. Start doing everything you need to do. Um, you know, get all your marketing stuff in line. This is a good time right now in the wintertime and even before you start. Get your Google My Business up. Get your website up. Get all of that stuff up and running. Um, get that stuff moving. Um, get, you get your Google My Business up. Get those 100 pictures on it. Do all of the things that I preach, right? Um, so for my membership coming up in January, I'm going to start talking all about Google My Business and how we can, um, it'll, every Monday night marketing will be, you know, a different thing that we have to do to keep us moving forward. Um, three $30,000 a month working on a fourth. Just ordered 200 more yard signs for washing that will go out before January 2023. Think about that, guys. He's going to put out 200 yard signs in December. Now, he does live in Myrtle Beach, so it, you know, it ain't like up here and where you, you can't get business. But you, and even up here, I mean, there's, you know, Benjamin's still working. Some people are still working. DJ's doing jobs right now. It's hard because you're spraying snow sometimes, but hey, you get it done. Uh, making $30,000 a month part time, will, um, why still work a regular job? Dang. Um, can you, cause he loves his regular job. Can you please make a video on financial side of pressure washing taxes, expenses, profit, etc.? Yep, yeah, I can do that. We have a whole year of TV commercials being produced for next year. Nice. Um, can you talk about, yep. I already hit that one. 
The acid won't hurt the white paint on the brick. It shouldn't, no. Um, if, if I spend $3, I get back 10 and multiply that by 1,000. Yep. Get the book, Profit First, Financial Peace by, yes. Profit First is what, Bill, this is who, um, Wavy. Profit First is definitely one that you should read. Um, if you haven't read Profit First, it's by Michael Kalazinski or something like that. Um, just type in Profit First in Amazon. You can either buy it or you can get it. Um, you can either buy it or you can get the audio version. I recommend the I like the audio version. Um, but yes, Profit First is definitely what you need to talk about. Um, you never know who's going to pick up your five around. It could start a big domino effect, but it won't if you don't put them out there. It's like anything. You never know what how much one sign's going to be. You never know how much one business card is going to be. You never know how much one um, um, five around um, post you know door hanger going to be. But I'll tell you what they won't be if you don't do it. Zero. You'll get zero return out of them if you don't do it. Um, I still need to figure out how to do a flat work faster. That is without SH. I feel like I'm way slower than everyone on your videos. Uh, eight gallon a minute or 10. Um, the whisper wash, 19 inch. That's how you get fast. Talk about follow-ups. Give the framework for how you're following up and what to say and how often. So I actually was, I, I did a webinar um, today and he was talking about this and I, I didn't realize it, but so they say that, and so he, this guy does plumbing, plumbing and heating. And they said that if someone fills out a form on your website and if you don't respond back to them within 15 minutes, the most likely you will, you will not get that job. They will go somewhere else. And so it's that important that when we get these forms filled out and they come to there, we need to have, whether we set up automation or we do whatever we need to do, that we are getting that um, customer talked to immediately within 15 minutes. The 15 minutes was kind of the magic number of whether or not you were going to lose that customer or not. And so we want to pound them hard. We want to hit them hard, right? We're going to keep asking because we want either a yes or a no. We don't want a maybe. We want a yes or a no. And so we're going to keep texting them. And text works way better than email. Um, text is one of those things that, you know, email, you're going to get. I, I literally got um, um, something spam. That's their spam email. Do they even check their spam email? No, they don't check their spam email. And so if they put that spam email there, you will not probably likely get that. But if I can get their phone number and I text them right away and I can start doing it, or, you know, I can do a thing in the system where I will actually, I can either send them a voicemail or I can send there and I can call the, I can call you, the business owner. When you pick it up, hit a number, then it transfers where it'll ring their phone number right away. Right. So these are things that we got to follow up so fast to make sure that we're not losing these things. We're not going to let this go for a week and now touch, touch them. We're going to talk to these customers. We want a hard yes or a hard no. We don't want, well, uh, right? And even if it's, well, I'm waiting on another bid. All right, I'm going to call you back tomorrow. I'm going to text you the next day. Hey, did you get that bid yet? Hey, did you get that bid yet? Hey, what, you know, these are the things that we're going to do to make our follow-up sound professional and make it happen. Again, we're going to assume the sell, right? Hey, do you know, hey, we got Friday open. Would you like me to get you on the schedule Friday? Right. I didn't say what days works best for you. I said, Hey, we got Friday open. Will that work for you? Right. We're going to assume the sale and we're going to make that happen. And we're going to try to close them as fast as we can. We're also going to ask them questions so that we can keep that conversation going. Um, these are all in follow-up, not just, Hey, I'm following up. You got any questions? Well, that's the dumbest thing you can do. No, they ain't got no questions they're going to ask. But what if we said for, you know, do you want a house wash or you want a roof clean? Well, I just want my house washed. Okay, you know, now we can start talking. So these are some things that we can do to help us close. I feel like they never say yes on follow-ups. Follow-ups is huge. You know, follow-ups right now for pressure or Christmas sites, I've seen almost $20,000 just from people following up. 
It's crazy. Um, could you talk a little bit more about roof cleaning? Why, what is, why is it a common failure point? Um, because we're using 6% bleach and we're using, um, and it kills everything. Um, that's why. Um, you know, a house wash, we're at 1.5%. You know, you can pour that on, you can spray 1.5% on you and you're, it's not even going to bother you. You spray 6% on you, it's going to eat your skin off. Um, it's going to kill every bush, even at 4%, you're going to kill bushes. You're going to, you know, and so some people say, well, why do you put 6% on when you should really only do 4%? Cause that's all you need. Well, because 4%, you probably gonna have to put it, reapply it where I look at it is I'm going to do 6% one time. It's going to kill everything on that roof. And I don't have to spray another chance of killing everything. Cause usually the second time when you go up there and start spraying, you start just spraying and your ground guy's not watering and now you've killed everything. Um, and so when we kill $10,000 worth of bushes, that gets expensive for that thousand dollar house wash. When you kill that $10,000 fish for a thousand dollar roof clean, that gets expensive, right? And so these are some things that we have to think about when we are doing um, this stuff um, and make sure that we don't kill stuff. Mr. George in the house, um, how about talk about getting a vehicle through the business? So um, you'll probably, unless you have good business credit, you're probably going to have to get it through your own um, name. And then you just... Um, Either you just use it through the business and then you can start writing it off. Um, it is good to have commercial insurance on it also because in that way it looks like it's through the business. Um, having problems with Google My Business. It won't verify me. It's been over two weeks. Very frustrating. It is. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, this is some things why I, you know, I used to say just go get your Google My Business and don't worry about a website. Don't worry about your citations. Um, but I've changed my name on that. <laughs> um, in the last six to months to a year, Google has made it really hard to get a Google My Business. Um, even if you get it verified, probably the first day you do something, it will get suspended. Um, so it's just Google is all it is. So don't try to do black hat tricks. You know, if your business, whatever your business name is, it better be on that Google My Business. Um, if your business name isn't, pressure wash Cincinnati and you put it as pressure wash Cincinnati, it's going to get suspended and you're not going to get it back. Um, you know, so make sure you have a DBA that says pressure wash Cincinnati or something like that. Um, I have an eight gallon a minute with 24 inch whisper wash. Uh, the 24 is slowing me down. Yes, it is. Cause you're, you can't move as fast. Um, reach out to old clients. What company are you with? I was with Pressure Wash Cincinnati. Um, I sold my business in eight, 2018, and now I'm with King of Pressure Wash, helping people start and grow their pressure washing businesses. Um, I help people make hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, literally. It's pretty awesome. I was following up on a roof wash to ask for a review and the customer gave a five star and then asked for another quote for her business. Don't, that's awesome. Um, roof cleaning is our best line item. You have to use common sense. What's that, uh, Chris? <laughs> and take your time. Guys, this isn't rocket science. Just do what's right and roll on. You know, the biggest thing with this is, is water, water. I mean, you've got to water, 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 water. Um, and water some more and water some more, right? You know, I always had a ground guy whenever I did roof cleanings and he literally watered from the time he got out of the truck to the time he got back in the truck to make sure that they didn't kill stuff because they will kill stuff. Um, especially when you get employees, they get in a hurry, they're not paying attention and they will kill stuff. So you have to make sure that you train them right. You have to make sure that when you're on the job, you do it right too. So that way they will do it right. Um, just because you tell somebody to do something don't, and you don't do it, they're not going to do it. Because they're going to be like, well, you don't do it. Why should I do it? He don't do it. I don't have to do it either. So it's important that we make sure that we are water, 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 and we set those systems in place and we follow those systems so that our employees will also follow those systems. So these are definitely some things that we have to think about when we are doing this stuff here. Um, so, 
if you want to go learn more and get um, some cool stuff coming out, um, go to kingofpressurewash.com. Um, and I have my membership there right now. You get um, the website is with included with a the membership. Um, eventually it won't be. Um, but for now, while I'm getting everything set up, it is. Um, I'm working on some systems to help with callbacks and to do some automations of if you miss a phone call. Um, I don't have it done yet. I'm working on it. I'm actually working on setting it up right now. Um, and so you can ask another question if you got one performance. Um, and so these are some things that what I've been working on. Um, so yes, the website is a is a template website, but you can go in and change all the wordings and stuff if you want. Um, and I'm working on getting another web another template, um, which will even be better than the last template. But I'll, I'll, my goal is, is to get two or three templates so that way you can pick and choose what template you want to use. You can change the wording or you can leave the wording alone. Um, it is best if you change the wording, but it is what it is. Um, I'm only giving you the template so that way I can get it up for you and make it happen for you. Um, Caleb, hey, um, um, I am there. Another question. Just filled out the website deal and applied for it and signed in. Okay, I will. I actually, if you just did that, I had one. Um, I got actually, you might be the one that did it yesterday. Um, I seen I got one that I got to go do that I didn't do today. I've been working on videos. And that's another thing. You guys can be working on videos. Um, and you don't have to be about how to do pressure washing. That's, you know, you can, but it's not going to help your regular business. Um, so if, what you can do is, is talk about things that can help your business. Um, you know, what will a customer, what can a and they ask you answer. What are your customers asking questions about? And go make videos about that. That will help your business out. Um, find the five things that every customer asks you a question about and go make a video on it. And this will help things out um, to do that. Um, so these are things that you can do to help your business grow. Um, and this is what you do to make it grow, right? So that's exactly what you want to do. So go check out that there. Just want to make sure um, nothing else is needed on my end. If there is, I will probably text you or will give you a message there. Where are the best places to plant money bushes? Anywhere where there's people at. Obviously, we want to know kind of where our target market is, um, wherever our area is. Um, we want to put them in there. Um, by the schools, you know, when they're sitting in the school parking lot, um, school parking lots are good, good. Um, the hospitals, cause there's doctors and lawyers and uh, well, maybe not lawyers, but doctors there anywhere where people may have money. That's where we want to put them. I put them on any main intersection. Um, I have a main intersection going down through our town here and I put them at every stop sign, every, everywhere. I want them to know where they are. Um, like a frequent asked video. Absolutely. Um, you need a marketing for dummy series, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. That is all in my membership. So Monday night marketing is what I do right here. This right here. So about three weeks ago, I had a guy on about LinkedIn. Um, and <laughs> the video, I was going to actually post it up on YouTube. Uh, but YouTube didn't like some of the stuff that he shared. Um, because it is some black hat stuff. It ain't black hat stuff. It's just stuff that's out on the internet that you can use, but you, YouTube did not like it. Um, so with that, um, if you want that, if you want to see that video from LinkedIn, you have to join the membership to get that video. Um, that video is worth about a half a million dollars. If you did what he said in that video, you will make a half a million dollars off of it because you will get all the commercial work you want. And that is where your business is. Right, that's where you get your big growth. That is from the that there. So, um, but with you saying that action, I am going to start my. Oh, that's what I was going to say. My goal is to start making a video a day, whether it's one of my lives that counts as one, or I'm going to do some YouTube shorts and some TikToks and some LinkedIn stuff. I'm going to do some regular videos. My goal is to do one video a week or one video a day every day. Um, and so I have a lot of video that I've compiled that I've done. So I'm actually working on this. So the, for December. 
number oh it's going to be a lot about christmas lights i don't have much christmas light stuff on this channel and i and my channel goes down pretty hard in in december because nobody's really looking for the um for pressure washing or for pressure washing so i'm actually going to put some christmas lights on here um so um because one of my best videos for the winter time is how to set a timer i know it's stupid but that's why i'm going to start hitting on some of this stuff here and uh and making this a um, little bit more but for december my goal is every day in december to put a video on and then moving forward is every day um, whether it's a short or um, my goal is to do two shorts and two um, regular videos and then i have my two lives so my my other day i will have to figure out what i'm going to do so i might do three shorts and two videos or i don't know we'll see what happens um, but I'm trying to get a lot of this done because next week I'm going to be out of town. And so I've got a lot of stuff going on. So that's why I wasn't able to get your website up today because I'm working on all of that stuff. Um, Monday night marketing is legit, man. I give a lot of information out in there. I don't hold back there. I learned so much there. Awesome. Um, when should I try to get commercial jobs? I'm turning now. I mean, we're, commercial jobs is not something that we get overnight. Commercial jobs is a long-term thing. You know, you might bid a commercial job this year for next year and don't get it till next year. It's just the way they work. Um, I would love to learn more about Christmas lights installs. Well, I'm going to have a lot of little videos. Um, I'll probably have some, but it's going to be a lot on there. You can also go check out my Christmas light channel. I have a whole Christmas light channel that has all of these videos on them, a bunch of them. They're a little bit older, but there's a bunch of them. Um, do you have a recommendation for who to use for SEO? I do not have no recommendations for this. I always call it snake oil. Um, this is why I teach it so that you can learn. Um, if I was going to use somebody, I would probably use somebody like Justin Monk or um, I can't think of uh, Mr. Pipeline, somebody like that. But um, that's um, or PDM is another one. One of those three. Um Actually, I've used I got PDM using it for um, what um, for DJ so that or you could even do um, which I had him on um, this past week um, Mindsaw um, I think Mindsaw he's doing all right for people too so I would look at one of those but everybody I mentioned you're looking at a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks a month twenty five hundred bucks a month um, but if you're going to spend money on SEO and you're only going to spend three four hundred dollars. Just save your money. You're you're gonna piss it away if you, if they're gonna give you SEO for three, four, five hundred dollars a month. Just save your money. You're pissing it away at that point because there's nobody gonna do anything for you for three, four, five hundred dollars a month for SEO. Um, what I was trying to say is, is I'm too young legally for commercial work. No, I don't think so. I don't know why you would be. So, but other than that, hope you all have a great night, and we'll see you all on Sunday.